base, and what I did, I just put black paint on there and burned it. Uh, this one, I wasn't planning on antiquing it, but I ended up at primer on it and everything, and I wouldn't normally put primer on it if I was going to antique it. But um, I'll show you how I do that process. And this, what this is, this is a uh, actual professional that antiqued this uh, plover. I forget what the heck the name of it is. Uh, anyone know offhand? It's a ready turnstone. A ready turnstone. Yep. It's a ready turnstone that uh, Ben Heineman, a uh, world champion, um, antiqued that one, and that's it's just a big selling item nowadays. Um, most of what I'm antiquing, I don't plan on it to be antique to begin with, and if I don't like the looks of it, huh, I'm going to beat the heck out of it and antique it. <laughs> um, this one I did make antiqued a little bit um, because it it's, was last year's best-selling decoy. It's on the magazine here. And it sold for $258,000, and I, I can't buy it. I'm going to try making one. Now it doesn't show real beat up or anything like that. I didn't beat that up or anything, but uh, just tried to antique it a little bit and uh, make it look old. Uh, this is one of Denny's decoys he wanted me to burn. And uh, it's got to be finished antique. Uh, this is oil painted. Now you put what kind of coating on it before you oil paint? Uh, you spray it? I think I sealed it. I don't even know if I sealed it. I might have just put <coughs> paint on. I don't. I, I don't generally prime. I use rustoleum. Yeah. And I try to paint the basic areas with the rustoleum. Uh, you'll you'll see. Uh, I'll pass it around. Um, you wanted me to heat treat it basically, and uh, it bubbles and flakes and boils the paint, and he's got to rough it up a little bit, sand it down, and, and put some coats on top of that yet, but you can see that the paint flakes up when you heat it. This is an actual old decoy, and uh, this is about from the 1800s, 1890 or so. And that's what they look like. Beat up neck, got to have 10 nails in it, and uh, one coat of paint on there, and most of it's gone. And you can just see that, see the flaking of it, what not, and what they look like. And they act differently. White paint acts different than black paint. So I just brought it for uh, for a person to look at. And, uh, a redhead? That is a redhead, yep. Made by who? Uh, I'm not exactly positive. It's from 1890. Before that's, 1900. That's still a body, is it? There's some name to it, I think. Oh, yeah, there's. It's from the Chesapeake Bay, and that's yeah, their yeah. whole style they use. Um, at the decoy show, Dave had uh, Mark Olson next to him, and Mark Olson had a black duck that made out of cork, and he burned the cork to give it the brown color on it, and then he stained on top of that. Is that what he did? Dave? Yeah, he did a nice job on it. Oh, that was a beautiful job. Yeah, I never even know how y'all did it, but it was a neat, something to try. Yeah, he uh, he burned the cork to get it a real dark color. It was a black duck, a black duck cork decoy, and he burned the cork, and uh, then he just put some coatings on top of that and left it. And it was careful, I mean, you so you don't start the cork on fire. You know what I mean? You can't just go. Shh. Yeah, you got to really kind of more careful than you would. With one. I'll uh, mm -hmm. I'll give it a little burn here and see what happens. I don't see any sprinklers. Um, but what I'm going to do is, uh, I will hit the torch on these birds a little bit. This is old cedar, um, half molded, lousy stuff to carve, uh, works good for antique birds. And uh, I'll burn this a little bit to show you a lot of these. I burn them ahead of time before you paint them, and then you burn them after you get paint on them. And I'll put a little dab of paint on here to show you what happens when burn acrylics but it doesn't do what oil paints do. Um, they'll just kind of bubble up and fall off. 
I have uh, burned some acrylic uh, for Denny and uh, basically just burned it off and he wiped it off and started it again. Now this isn't going to take too long here guys, we're not going to, we can't make You don't need it on high heat or anything, but that's what Mark did to his black duck, just like that. And he put a sealer stain on top of that and it was done. It looked absolutely beautiful for black duck. And different woods act differently. Now, I'm not going to make too much smoke here or anything like that, but uh, sugar pine will actually, uh, if you've got pine or sugar pine, the grains will separate and it makes it look old and weathered like it's driftwood. Uh, I'll pass this around here. Here's the wet paint. some paint underneath it that has to dry and you just let it dry. Give it a couple days. Again, I'm using oil and after it's dried you take a rag and wipe it off and those big bubbles will pop off of there and you'll have nothing but crust sticking up and little cracks. That kind of thing. Uh, this one here was on put on pretty thin and it just got a little bit of bubbly and powdery which is good to have in different spots. Antique birds, they tend to look different in different areas. They're not all the same, and different colors actually act different on, anti on old birds than, uh, like, white and black are totally different. 
and the red, you can see red does many different things to them. Each uh, color has got its own reaction. Phil, there's three techniques on antiquing that I learned over the years. At uh, St. Charles one year, nobody else was in his room and I had a long conversation with this guy from Texas. I forget his initials. It's like R.J. Wilson? R.J. Wilson. Wilson? Uh -huh. Okay. And I noticed the tones where he had burned off stuff and a nice color under there. And I said, how, you know, is that shellac under there or what? Well, he said, I'll tell you my secret. He said, in my shop, I've got a five-gallon bucket. And all morning, I drink coffee. And I let it sit around and it gets cold, so I just throw it in the bucket and get new hot coffee. And then after I've carved a bird, I just let it soak for a day or two in this coffee. And then if I burn something off, I don't get the look of bare wood. But it's been so saturated with the coffee <laughs> that it gives that nice color. And the other one, um, I know with Keith Miller, he likes to put on two coats of amber shellac and then the oil paint on top of it. So then when you go to, to heat it up, that shellac underneath will bubble and it gives a, a nice effect. And the yep. third technique is when you get done with one, if you want it to look older, you just leave it outside for the winter. Yeah. And uh, that does a job on it too. Yeah. The very first decoy I made, I put shellac on. All I knew was, <clears throat> excuse me, you had to seal the wood. And I read books, oh, guys, use shellac. And I, that, I had shellac. I put shellac on it, painted over it, oil paints. And uh, that was in the spring, and in the summer it got hot, and I thought, I'm going to put some age on this bird, just for the heck of it. And I sat it out on my, my deck, and within an hour, that paint just bubbled right up and popped off in her. <laughs> it was disastrous. Oh, my God, I didn't want that to happen. It's supposed to be a decoy. Do not put shellac on these decoys unless you want to antique them. Um, because shellac in heat, in the sun, it bubbles up every time. And we had a guy at, uh, it was the first year I went to game fair with the club. Hmm. And we've got a, a uh, taxidermist brought in absolutely beautiful fish. And they were sitting on a stand in the sun underneath the tent, but the sun hit them. And the whole one side of all these fish bubbled up. And he didn't know about it, and, but he used shellac and it wrecked every fish that he had. It just bubbled that paint right off of there. It's horrifying. <laughs> if you don't want it to happen, it's horrifying. But yep, that would work as a good antiquing method. And uh, I like to, I've got a sand bucket, like a kid. And I will put these into the sand bucket and rub them around and I got a scouring pad, scrub them off a little bit. Uh, anything to give them a dirty, sandy, rough, coarse texture on some of them. And uh, Explain the wash. What do you mean by wash? How do you apply it and what does it do? Well, an oil wash, again, I'm using oils. It's different than acrylics. Uh, this is oil paint. This is raw umber mixed in the jar with paint thinner. And you just shake it up, get it all dissolved. And what I will do is either take a brush and run it on certain spots and just let it set or I'll take a rag and dash the rag full of umber and wipe it all over the place and you you just what happens is it just leaves coloring in all the cracks and crevices and it will change the color of the paint that you've got underneath it and uh, again it depends on what color wash you use as to what kind of uh, shade you get um, this professional, Ben Heidelman, again, he's a world champion. We are really lucky to have Tom in our class, in our club. 
Ben Heinemann, a world champion, not, not as good as Tom, but he's right up there. He does not give away a secret about nothing. <laughs> you can ask him till you're blue in the face, and he'll, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's right, yep. Yeah. He won't say nothing. Willie, Dave's right next to him. No, he's a nice guy. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I know you were trying to get to <laughs> When you bought that story, you were kind of give a couple of hints on how he did it. He was well, like, yeah, he's not going to give away nothing. And we had uh, uh, Jim Bonham talked with him for an hour, I think, last year. And he wouldn't give away one secret of nothing for nothing. He wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> he did say, I told him I wanted to buy this off of him. And I asked him if it was oil, because I like oil painted. <laughs> and he said, well, it's, it's mostly oil. That's all he'd say. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these uh, the guys. A lot of the guys don't give away any secrets. They don't tell you any tips. Um, they won't help teach you or train you of any kind. Uh, so we're real lucky to have Tom Fleming in the club, along with Frank and uh, Ed and uh, a few of the other guys that are right up there in the. Championships. Uh, any questions on antiquing or aging or anything like that? Just one comment. My favorite thing. I, I've only done a few. Uh, I took uh, the same class with Keith Mueller <clears throat> a number of years ago. But uh, when you get a knot, I always like wood with you know really nice knots. Just to make it look old. And uh, if you take your torch and just hold it right on that knot. Uh, for quite a long time, it'll start to glow red because it's very, very hard wood. But eventually, it'll crack. And it'll crack. You'll hear this loud crack. Yeah. And then it sends out the cracks and the really cool uh, uh, antique type details. And in the meantime, that wood is or that heat is slowly burning away the grain, so it gives a little grainy to the effect of the knot. But it also sends those really cool cracks out too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Torching, if you're easy with the torch, can do some unbelievable things. Uh, yeah. And I just learned all of it by just experimenting. Um, but definitely, knots in, uh, in any wood, they're going to crack, and they make a lot of excitement yeah. in places you don't want them to sometimes. You know, if you got a little bit of that cedar that's maybe a little punky and you don't want to do a good decoy out of it or something that's gray stuff. Or yeah, yep. Yep. Denny uh, gives like most of my rotted and stuff to Denny, and Denny makes many uh, <laughs> old decoys with rotted wood. What kind of wood do you use for that? This is uh, white cedar, and the bill is a oak doll. No, no, the crow. The crow, this is a uh, rotted white cedar. <laughs> it was you really nice that wood was rotten, you said it was just softer green. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, you can cut into this stuff, what do they call this? Spalding. Uh, you can cut into this stuff that I've had a couple chunks of it, and uh, you can just smell the mold coming out of it. It's, <laughs> it's absolutely terrible to curve, yeah. unless you're making it rough. So um, your, your wash is that that blends all the stuff together and it makes them look really nice. It just it yeah takes all the highlights away from everything. Acrylics. Uh, Again, I don't use, but oils, do um, you use any wash on anything? If I've had uh, many a decoys, I get done painting them, I think, that looks terrible. <laughs> Absolutely looks like a piece of junk. And uh, the first one I did was uh, with raw umber, and I wiped it with raw umber, and it turned out to be the most beautiful duck I ever made. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing what one wash, one coat of wash will do to a bird. And they talk about oil painted birds having a shine to them. You can wipe them with a little raw umber and it will be so dull, you wouldn't believe it. It really does magic on decoys. What's your paint there? Do you just use like mineral spirits, acetone? Yeah, you, well, not acetone, but I use mineral spirits. I use actually unodorless stuff. Anything odorless is all I use. But uh, our colleagues, why don't you take. Uh, you can. And, and yep. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. Yeah. Yep. I've painted with acrylics, and I've used a uh, oil stain over the top. A lot of acrylics. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I'll sand it down so it's, uh, you know, you don't take all the detail off, off of it, but I'll, uh, 
I'll just soak it down and I will rub off as much as I can. And it just adds a nice, it evens out all the tones. Yeah, yeah. Like your, uh, so you can use the oil over your Yeah, I'm using yeah. the oil stain over your grill. That you can do. I'm going to raise the grain a little bit too. And, uh, yeah. There's a lot of ways um, for antiquing guys. Um, you can see uh, old birds, the neck joints and stuff are usually worn. And, and what he did on these, these are nail bills, and he just soaked these in muranic acid. And it'll bubble that rust, make it rusty, and he sticks them in. Uh, I've used muranic acid, and it works fantastic on wood and any metal to antique it, but don't do it in your wood shop. <laughs> don't make the mistake I did. I actually had, I had just had a little cup with just a little bit of acid in it, and I was putzing with, playing with it, and I was trying to rust up a, an eye bolt like that right there, and I put it underneath my bench, and I forgot about it. And it was about three weeks later, I started noticing rust on all my tools. <laughs> oh, Holy oh, cow, what's oh, going on? Oh, oh. And here I looked down at that bucket, and it was just a little, I mean, just a little tiny bit of muranic acid, and it was like boiling down there. And I was like spraying out acid all over my whole shop, and every tool <laughs> I had got rusted. And uh, so don't take it in your shop. Wow. Definitely something to do outside. Um, but it is nice to have. Uh, you can use muratic acid on these joints, neck joints, and it'll actually rot that wood off. Uh, you just put it on there for a little while and it'll eat up that wood a little bit and soften it up. It's unreal what it does. And you just walk, put water on it to kill it. And you can do, uh, Vicar will do the same thing, it just takes a lot longer. Um, and Denny wanted me to talk about uh, shell, making shell eyes. I've got a lot of shells. If anyone needs any or wants to take any home, come grab one. So, um, but the idea is you can use the outside, you can use the inside, anything you want. And uh, if you've got one certain spot on a shell that you want to use, it just you have to take a little saw, a grinder or something and, and cut it out. And what you do is you glue it onto a doll, just like this. Hmm. And I glue it on with epoxy. And I'll show you how to round it off from there. Uh, but you just basically grind it down. Once it's hardened on there, you grind it down to the size you want. That's going to be your eye? That's going to be an eye. Hmm. And you grind it down to the size you want, and what you do is you just cut it off right at the tip there into the wood, and you glue the whole thing right into your big toy. Hmm. Here's, a, here's another early one. You got a, you got a paint it or what? Nope, you don't paint it, you don't do nothing. You try and use the color that you might want to put into it. Oh. You've got, they've got red shells, or purple shell, white shell, brown shell, you can use any color you want. Hmm. And all you do is epoxy it onto the end of a doll and you grind it down. I got a grinder here, I can show you on that one chunk that's yeah. Yeah. But it's for just a plain doll. Oh. This is actually had one cut off of it. Oh, you can use that for an eye. One of those grooves. Well, you can they used to use anything. You just cut it off and glue it in. You, you don't need to have eyes, you can grind those eyes on there. Yeah, you you on. That this, yeah. this is gonna to be to the outside or inside? That's gonna be the outside. Oh. What kind of duck is going to lie like that? Any kind you want. <laughs> it's, it's on the end of a stick. Um, you might want to make up a bunch, and then you find your best two that look similar. And this is where I've got, I've done it a couple times, and uh, I've just had a bunch of extras, and, uh, and that's what happens. But, yeah, I just, I bought a little grinder like this at a garage sale. It's got an angled stone on it. You just turn it on and they just grind it down once it's dried. And any size you want, you just keep measuring what size you want. And Jeez. Well, you're doing that because you're cheaper. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what 
what they did in the old days. <coughs> they used they used seashells for eyes. Really? Yeah, they did. They carved them. They put seashells in them. Whatever they had. So do you use seashells on this stuff? No, none of these have seashells. Eyes. This has got nails in it. For eyes? Yep. Really? And this has got no eyes on it. Used old window panes. That had to be on the east coast. Yeah. That's cool. You see this? Right. But you can see he goes, you know, he's got on this one certain colors crack and peel, others don't. And he did exactly that. I know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're all grinding this down here. That's a pretty good idea, though. <laughs> That would be the outside. You can do anything you want. Yeah, you could grind it off, but it would take the color off of it. So, like I say, you can cut out any piece you want, any place, and get an actual curved piece. So you've got that same color, and then just cut it off right, on, right underneath the glue and glue it right into the eye socket that you've got. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, he talked to you, he just won't tell you any of his secrets. How did you say you draw the grain on this one? What's that? Yeah, this is cedar, and to make the wood grain, after you've got it, your final shape, you just take a wet rag and wipe it, and the grain will just stand. Oh yeah, it's fine. And cedar works really well. Yeah, you think that would work on pine? It'll work a little bit on pine. Yeah, here. not probably so much as you know. There's a the but try heat on it. Yeah, and it might stand up a little bit more. But I mean, there's a lot of little tricks to it. Once you, I would normally once I wet it down, you gotta let it dry. And I use oil primer. I would oil prime it once with a real thin coat, and it really makes it stand up and get fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Then I gotta sand it down lightly. You sand that stuff down, and uh, then put another coat of primer on it. Like it looks really nice, and if you if you do a little like real fine like 220 or 320 sandpaper, so you get just the top of the grain. Yeah. Take all the. Paper. 